Hello to everyone, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. So good evening. We are here at new, a new point of view, our digital edition of Linea Pelle Fair, which will be uh, physical the upcoming September. Today we are in a Thursday, 23 July, and we are very pleased to talk about a very interesting supply chain and today we have a very special guest where they we want to touch a very interesting point which is changes and challenges are two elements that in supply chain right now are coming up on the top of the stage so let me introduce you the guest of today and let me uh, welcome Alexander, because it's so early morning. Hi, Alex. Uh, how are you? Good morning. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Good morning to you and all of your audience. Thank you. Thank you to attend. Thank you. Your early morning from Los Angeles. And then welcome to Giacomo, Giacomo Zorzi. So welcome. Hi, welcome to everybody. Nice to be here. Yeah, where are you now? I am in Veneto region now, and near, very close to the Venice to the Venice districts of Tenerife here in the north of Italy. So, and then unfortunately, we cannot have Panos Mitaros, Executive Vice President of Ecoleather, because alas, he couldn't join this, uh, this meeting, this talk. It's not a problem. We will refresh another one. So I'm sure that we will find a suitable time for Alexander and we will do like an aperitivo in the next. <laughs> in the next. So we will do something like this. Otherwise, Panos will send us all the wishes. So let me start to to go a little bit in deep for our uh, participant with Giacomo, because Giacomo is uh, working in deep with Italian tannery rapid. What's going on and what was going on in the Italian tannery scenarios in the latest month? Giacomo, it's your floor. Oh, thanks so much. Uh, I have to be clear. I have my English is enough. Uh, tell me, stop me where you want and you can ask me whatever you need. So what's going on on the Italian tanning industry? Uh, I think that we can observe two main and two big drivers. Main, greater attention to sustainability and on the other side, greater attention to process organization that is become, that is to become best as possible supplier, looking to different point of view, be reliable, be transparent, have a permanent production consistency, and have a very solid sustainability attitude. Those two big drivers are very strictly connected. Um, thinking to actual situation, also due to COVID crisis, mm -hmm. has probably accelerated such processes that was in place since a few years. An efficient organization of a tannery, not only in production processes, is a prerequisite to be reliable and transparent to demonstrate, as I said before, a permanent production consistency and to have a very solid sustainability attitude. When I say also due to COVID crisis, I mean that companies in this time, in this period, in this last months, has more time to think and reproject their processes and activities. This is interesting. Such messages need a super solid business background. Otherwise, you run the risk to spread inaccurate messages or even inappropriate information. A supplier uh, able to give solidity and concreteness to his own message about how he is moving towards sustainability 
becomes a trustworthy and credible supplier. Uh, I insist on the message that sustainability is not a, 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 a creole condition, but you have to think about a movement towards a perfect condition. A perfect condition do not exist, but all we can do is to move toward such condition, such situation. Sustainability is a very complex issue, often interpreted in a very simplistic way. To be credible, it has to be measured and verified and eventually certified also. The risk to slide in greenwashing is very high and Italian tanneries have making so big efforts to avoid greenwashing. To be credible, it is very interesting also to observe how sustainability issues uh, is becoming more and more a service to a client, to the client. A uh, lot to the whole chain of custody, long to the whole chain of custody. Tanning district is made, as you know, probably uh, of a large number of companies, of tanneries, each one undertaking a single step of the whole tanning process. And you know that it's very long and complex. There is a little number, a very little number of tanneries with a complete process inside, from raw hide to finish and leather. The majority execute uh, one single steps with a very, very high specialization. And the result of such model is a system more complex, but with a constantly increasing specialization. And at the end, a higher quality. This is absolutely sure. This is a winning model. In the past years, mainly the biggest tanneries were pushing the whole chain to produce data and information, evidences, certifications. But what we can observe today, also the smallest companies, even those in the first phases of the supply chain, and this is very interesting, the first phases of the supply chain, uh, I'm thinking in particular to high and skin suppliers, are designing their managing process to control their own performances around sustainability. In this way, the whole supply chain is having an advantage. It has become a, uh, I, I can call it a, a super concrete, concrete service that can be easily used and it is making the difference. All this pushes tanning sector in its entirely. This is possible, especially where there is a working district. We can make some examples to understand. For example, there is a voluntary standard to use a green label connected to the word eco leather. Everyone of you knows, I'm sure, the misunderstanding linked to the incorrect use of the, th of the term eco leather. But in this case, I'm talking about a real leather with a low environmental impact. The standard uh, was released, uh, imagine, uh, more than 10 years ago, but because of its complexity, no tanneries has implemented it. Today, there is an interesting number of tanneries that are approaching to it, and we will have the first certifications in a few months. This is very interesting. This happens now when tanneries in this period has more time to think about their processes. Uh, even regarding traceability, another example, we can make a similar reasoning, thinking about the precondition the client wants to have guarantees connected to the origin of leather he is buying. To trace back along the supply chain, we necessitate a collaboration of the supply chain itself. And without collaboration, this is not possible. From this point of view, collaboration from one side and services to the other side towards concrete sustainability, these are two very interesting drivers where Italian districts are moving. This is a very interesting evolution of the uh, tanning districts, tanning sector in the last, I say in the last time, in the last months, but also in the last years. This is my very short point of view I offer to you. Interesting, interesting. And now I really want to give the floor to Alex. Uh, but let me just add that 
I like to, to have the opinion of Alex uh, in terms of even two elements that are really impressed that Giacomo was talking like sustainability has a service and also collaboration and also concrete sustainable actions. So Alex, uh, what, what do you think about what Giacomo is, is talking right now? In your, from your position of American and California, but also a person that knows Italy very well. <laughs> well, thank you very much for uh, allowing me to speak to your audience. Um, I, I certainly appreciate what Italian tanneries have been doing, and typically Italian tanneries, they set the stage for the rest of the world to follow. And uh, we appreciate uh, the efforts in sustainability and effort in uh, transparency of the supply chain from the rawhide all the way to the finished goods. And this will set up as a model for the rest of the world tanneries to follow the suit and follow to um, guideline. Uh, uh, as we saw during this COVID situation, world is concern more on uh, how and uh, contribute back to the world. And sustainability is the big word, and it's uh, changing the viewpoint of the American as well as the rest of the world. We care about how the impact of our consumption is on this current environment. We are seeing that every angle, every steps that we take, it could contribute to sustainability. One, it is the transparent manufacturing, for instance. It is allowing people to understand where the product comes from, how it is get processed, and what are the values that they are added on top of it, and uh, when it gets to the uh, end user consumer, uh, at what price point, and in general, transparent on process, and costing. Uh, second thing, it is uh, customers, they wanna be involved in uh, the creation. They wanna be involved and feel that they are owning uh, the product that they are buying, not necessarily buying another it or another item. They wanna know why. The question of the future is why. Why I am buying this product? Uh, because it has a less impact on the world. Why I'm buying this product? Because maybe I love the design. The why it is a, a very important uh, a, a factor in the future to be addressed because world is full of the product, full of the items that everybody can buy. And uh, now we need to address why and hopefully with the sustainability from the angle of the uh, leather tannery in, in Europe, uh, and in particular in Italy, you guys, you can just give a reason, which is why I'm buying Italian leather rather than buying a leather that it is produced in Bangladesh is dollar fifty maybe per square foot less. But the environment and impact that they have on the world is drastically different. So, uh, in in general, in America during this period, we are feeling that people, they are shifting sometimes because of the lack of knowledge towards of the, uh, let's call it a vegan leather, they call it, which I don't believe that is the right word to use. It is mostly petroleum-based processed uh, material that has a huge impact in, in the environment. But people, they feel it might have the less impact than lead the tanning process, but they don't realize that the tanning process has evolved and it changed significantly in this last um, 20, 30, 40 years. The impact of it on the environment significantly reduced and in some places almost it turning to almost uh, a fraction of the, what uh, uh, it used to be. But in general, uh, we see another trend that is happening in the United States in particular, that it is the localization customization and automation. And uh, a, a manufacturer
manufacturers, they are wanting to shore. The, the, the idea of the producing in overseas, transporting it, bring it into the uh, uh, warehouses and uh, distribute it and having a huge inventory before you get the idea of if this product even sell or not. It has created a lot of fast fashion and a lot of impact on the environment. Now we will see people that want to have a smaller production uh, run. More like the concept get developed, it get dropped in the Instagram uh, even before it is produced. And the order comes in and then you produce exactly the amount that you got order. This will reduce your impact on the world and it's considered sustainable. Interruptions in the distribution channels also, it has created a major opportunity for a lot of the designers to be able to take advantage of this gap that it is opened up. Right now, at least in America, we are going to close more than the 5,000 retail stores in the next couple of uh, months. And what does that mean? That means a lot of the smaller designer, now they can just create their own collection, get the uh, sample made, get the order, and ship it to their customers, increase their margin, profit margin, because they are bypassing the retailers, and uh, they can communicate directly to their end user the way that they want to be communicated about their product explaining the why they have to buy from them. So these are the, all the changes that I see is happening in here, in addition of the customization and uh, market interruption, repurposing of the materials, all of the, those things that uh, we have seen. And um, that's, that's about it, I think. Uh, Can I, I want to add something because you are talking about direct to consumer, so in a certain way. So where you speak about automation bespoke, you speak about designer, they are making just a few products and they sell directly. So, and I assume that this means brands need to become part of the supply chain. So designer are starting to be more integrated to the supply chain. How can you see this evolution uh, merging between designers and the supply chain, in this case, Italian? Because uh, Giacomo was talking about sustainability as a new service. You talk about other way to be sustainable, like I design because you order something and then I produce only one pieces, two pieces, three pieces. How can you merge these elements for the American scenario in this case? You know that the traveling right now, it is becoming a major issue. We mm -hmm. used to come to Linea Pella and get exposed to the many, many ex exhibitors that they are showing what the product that they have introduced for season per season. I believe the first of all, the seasonality, it is going to disappear. And no more people, they are caring about the season because we are integrated globally. And when it is winter in, uh, let's say in Italy, it is summer in Australia. And so therefore it is no season is needed to be concentration of the every uh, fashion design. Second of all, I think due to the fact that we are not traveling, we need to be more and more virtual, like what we are doing right now. Uh, I think the database of the tanneries in Italy, that they uh, can display a small little video and exhibitions of their product and what kind of the specialty they have, that also what kind of the customization or collaboration they are willing and able to allow for a end user customers to participate on that. For instance, we in our La La Land uh, a facility here in Los Angeles, we have at least four different designers that they are, with, they are under the same roofs. We develop for the many, many brands here locally, but we always have to, uh, uh, we have a difficulty, even with me being exposed to for years and years in uh, Italian know-how and Italian tannery, Italian technology, is still it is very challenging sometimes to find innovation. 
so therefore, I think uh, uh, these designers, they need to be able to see what it is possible to be done and at least give an indication and let their imagination go wild. We need, for instance, we are seeing right now uh, designers that they are impacting a lot in the uh, uh, general global market, like Virgil Lebloh, for instance, for the uh, Vuitton. What does he do? He has a kippal shopping, uh, I mean, that has been a classic design for the uh, Vuitton for the years and years, just applying different materials to it and reintroducing the same product. His motto is, don't fix it, if it doesn't need to be fixed, just do a small touch onto it and reintroduce it back into the market. Just exactly what he has done with the Air Force One, exactly same things that he has done with the many styles of the Vuitton, with just coloring, material, ex uh, and uh, a new way of the expressing same classic uh, silhouette uh, back again to the consumer. So that can happen only with the big uh, brands like the LVMH group that they have a lot of the support system for a designer to be able to play in their library, in their facility, in their supply chains that they are able, uh, giving them capability to be introducing the same class. Unfortunately, rest of the world, they don't have that chance. So I think uh, Linea Pele could be a instrumental to create this opportunity for the, every designer to be able to have a, such a library, such a support system, such a, uh, infrastructures available to them and help them to grow because you don't know who will be the next designer unless you don't give them the opportunity to express themselves. And I can see that, I can tell you for the last uh, 20 years that I have been in Los Angeles, I have seen a designer that they came to me with the, uh, 64 pairs of the shoes or even 24 pairs and begged me to help them to produce. And now they are the international major brand, uh, like Amiri, like uh, John Buscemi, like uh, uh, John Geiger, like Shoe Surgeon, like uh, and many to, to name, you know, that they were uh, so small, but if I would have not gave them the opportunity to, to flourish, they would not be such a brand internationally, globally. So I think with Linea Pellet support and the new way of communication, we potentially will be able to generate a lot more designers coming up and yet, stabilizing our industry that is going to face a major, major uh, problem by biggest brand. You know, in the old time, everybody wanted to go after the coach or um, I don't know, because they were buying 50 million or 100 million uh, square foot of the leather annually from them. Uh, but right now, those, those companies that are struggling, those companies that are not expressing themselves and the motto is right now, we need to go after the smaller accounts and a smaller uh, startups and help them to express and uh, grow up. Last year alone, uh, before the COVID, almost about $100 billion worth of the business has been taken away from the big brands and big accounts by the smaller startups. So that trend right now is going to exponentially go up because all the retail chains they are filing for bankruptcy and they are shutting down the stores. So that sector, it is the sector that I believe that the industry has to look into and facilitate uh, uh, and ease up the process for them to be able to be participating with the tanneries and participating with their concepts and ideas on a smaller scale, more quicker to the market, and faster on demand rather than inventory-based type of product. Well, so it was so straightforward. So I understood, and I think everyone understood that small quantities, small brands, uh, small 
let me say, small designer that in a, in a different way, they will jump and climb the scales to become the designer. So now I have a question to Giacomo. So what do you think about the Italian tanneries in this case that, and not also the Italian tanneries, also the Italian companies that work in material. Do you think that are them able to adjust and to, to work on this way? Because this is a changing that we already had in the air and Alexander was very straightforward to say, now we have to look on it. So what, which is, you, thinking about this or your opinion yes <clears throat> um, I was thinking about one thing in particular when Alexander was talking um, I'm reading on the slide that today brands need to become part of the supply chain uh, this is absolutely real I really believe in it and this is a very very clear need uh, but uh, we must never forget that we have, together with the brands, share the same vision about sustainability, starting from the definition of what sustainability is uh, and what to measure and how to guarantee it. Every one of you, I'm sure, know the problem of the prolification of standards, uh, environment, eco labels, and so on. And imagine the problem for a company having 10 or 20 different clients with 20 different ways to measure, to guarantee, to demonstrate sustainability. That is very, very difficult. That could become a very difficult situation. So, Linea Pelle, I suppose, can be the best occasion to know how Italian tenories have learned to measure and guarantee their way of thinking, only um, and also about sustainability, but not uh, about only about this uh, this this topic. Um, innovation is a continuous process both on a technical, but mainly on, in these years, as I directly can observe, on an environmental point of view. Without innovation, it's not possible to continue maintaining our predominant position in the international market, mainly in environmental performances. I am sure that about environmental aspects, on environmental aspects, Italy is, uh, uh, playing, uh, can play as important role in the world. I'm sure of that. But we have to share the same vision. We have to uh, much more collaborate in how to consider this. On my opinion, this is uh, one of the most important aspects to consider with the brands. Correct. <laughs> And I, I want to add a couple of questions that we have right now. Because Giacomo is talking about the terminology. We are curious, Alex, to know, do still Americans use vegan words when they have to define some materials in general? I'm not only talking about leather. Is the vegan word, it's still ongoing? Or do you see other terminologies? entering in the language well vegan is still it is the main uh, uh subject a lot of people they talk about the vegan leather and right now the mushroom leather it came on to the play you are seeing the apple leather is coming into play uh, and, uh, and cactus leather it is coming into the play there are uh, all, everything that is uh, necessarily is not from the animal uh, and produced by some kind of the, um, let's say, uh, product that is not animal-based. They call it leather still. And uh, that's a confusion that is creating in the market. Uh, a, another thing that we are seeing right now, it is happening, 
and the angle of the sustainability, it is recycled leather. Recycled leather from the byproduct of the, a lot of the uh, tanneries they have used to use their, when during the cleaning process, they used to send all of their uh, remnants or they call it uh, the, the uh, byproduct of the tanning to uh, a places that they made bonded leather, for instance, from it, or mm -hmm. some subpar type of the material. Right now, we see this a lot of companies, even like Nike, they are commissioning people to use the recycled leather and use those bioparticles and create a more technical material for themselves that it can work for them better. So uh, we see a lot of movement in this uh, category. And vegan is still, it is very important. And uh, they, they, and many people are using it. Another angle that I see is called technical leather, that it is coming to play a little bit these days. Interesting. So Giacomo, what do you think about this topic in uh, recycled leather, which is a stage of Italian tanneries in this kind of aspect? Uh, um... I, I hope I have heard all the interim of Alexander. My web connection has, was not so good in, 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 the last, in the last seconds, but um, recycled leather uh, could be a very good opportunity for the sector, uh, but never to be confused uh, with uh, the real leather. Uh, you know that we have recently have seen published that uh, a recent law about the terms, the using of the terms leather, and this is a perfect example of how can we manage an important aspect like this. Probably uh, only Italy, Italy in Europe has uh, a legislation that controls and regulates such using of terms. Uh, I hope I've, uh, I have understood uh, in a good way what Alexander said. Uh, yeah. Maybe I should uh, go ahead, Orietta, but uh, what I meant from the recycled letter, it is that, for instance, uh, a, a, the, during the tanning process, you will have uh, some uh, 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 or you have uh, you have an overstock of the product of uh, is not used and the quality deteriorated or it has saying in the inventory of the tanneries for so long that nobody want to use it as it is anymore. You can granulate those and repurpose it again and create a new leather from it or new semi leather from it or whatever you might call it. Uh, uh, but yet you using dead stock to create a new product without uh, inventing and going through the whole process again from the start. Yeah, correct, correct. So I think it's a very important part to take in consideration as well. So I want to say that our time is running and uh, I like it to say that we didn't want to go too much in many topics, but we already touched it. So the very, very main aspect uh, that we, we also touched in responsibility, sustainability, a new view of uh, direct to consumer, which is really, a, let me say, an actual trend. Uh, growing and growing in the United States, many parts of the world. So something which is related to long lasting, uh, producing less but better. But even I, I will, uh, let me recap with honesty. So uh, before to make my conclusion, so just for suggestion for changes and changes that you want to give to designers or to companies, designers or companies? Oh, what a, <laughs> what a difficult question that uh, the suggestion can be very, very, uh, a very long list. 
but probably the main I would like to share with you is to um, uh, is to um, how can I say uh, collaborate hmm. as strong as possible with tenories to understand what is the uh, probably best uh, definition of sustainability in leather sector, what is correctly correct to uh, which are the correct indicators to uh, measure it and communicate it without collaboration with brands and designers uh, that could be uh, much more difficult to work together. Correct. Alexander? Uh, well, I think I can second Giacomo that the communication, it is the major, major factor of uh, passing the information down to the consumer level because we, in the end, we are all at the mercy of the consumer. And if the consumer believes that uh, our product it is not sustainable, no matter how sustainable we are, we don't have any choice. The market share will move away from us. So this is the, uh, a major factor that I believe that every tannery has to have a documentation on their steps that they have taken uh, in the sustainability factor, which is good player. And also, again, uh, opening up themselves with a, uh, some kind of the channel. I know that sometimes uh, leather industry in Italy, unfortunately, I can say it is uh, due to the fact that it is so traditional, how do you say, it's so traditional. And sometimes the uh, owners and management, they have a, such a hard time to embrace new technology, embrace new idea, embrace uh, uh, openness and a feeling of they might get copied. They might get uh, a, um, how do you say, uh, their market might taken away and the idea might taken away. My suggestion to them is that if you get copied, that means you were really good. And that means you are very, very innovative. So therefore, keep on your innovation and don't be afraid of the, uh, any kind of the competition. Because competition make you better. Competition make you be on tip of your toe and set up the leadership. And uh, open up. Open up and allow the people to get into your uh, uh, system and help you to grow and pass your messages and your product globally. So thanks so much. Thanks so much for your time, both of you. And thanks, thanks to all of the person that took part of this uh, uh, conversation that we have. I invite you to follow us in next September because we are in a new point of view. We are very straightforward. Uh, you can see again this uh, conversation online in YouTube in I think in a few minutes we will be uploaded so all of the people in the world can listen and of course react and give their opinion. Grazie. Thank you so much. Have a good day. And Thank you. Thanks to you. Thank Ciao. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks to all of you. Bye. Bye.